Imagine a world where CM Punk never walked away from WWE, Eddie Guerrero never passed away, and Sting joined WWE in 2005. How would the history of wrestling change? In this video, we will use WWE 2K23 to simulate these scenarios and see what could have been. Our story begins with a heated feud between CM Punk and Triple H. In a shocking turn of events on SmackDown, Triple H launched a brutal assault on CM Punk. The cerebral assassin stomped on Punk mercilessly, leaving him battered and bloodied. The WWE Universe held its collective breath as they realized the game was far from finished with his brutal assault on CM Punk, who lay battered in the center of the ring. As Punk's body absorbed each punishing blow, it was clear that he was already severely battered from the earlier assault, witnessing a level of brutality rarely seen even in the world of professional wrestling. The feud between CM Punk and Triple H had escalated to a new frightening dimension. The next Monday night on Raw, tensions exploded as Punk and Triple H engaged in an ugly brawl. Officials and referees had to rush in to separate the two bitter rivals, both consumed by their deep animosity. So, on that Friday when Triple H threw down the WrestleMania 30 challenge, Punk showed up with a kendo stick and just went for it. He unleashed a wild attack on Triple H just days before WrestleMania 30. WrestleMania 30 had arrived and the highly anticipated showdown between CM Punk and Triple H was finally upon us. These two were no strangers to the ring and despite their bitter history, they delivered an incredible match. Despite the bad blood between them, their chemistry in the ring was undeniable. The crowd was completely immersed in the action, unsure of who would emerge victorious. The match was a roller coaster of close falls and intense moments. In a sudden moment, CM Punk took control back of the match, and now it was Triple H who was in trouble. Punk hit the game with a running high knee in the corner, followed by a bulldog. CM Punk had Triple H caught in a tight anaconda vice. The struggle was real, with Triple H fighting to reach those ropes. After a hard-fought battle, Triple H managed to break free, delivering a bone-crushing spinebuster to Punk. The crowd was on the edge of their seats, feeling the intensity in the air. It seemed like Triple H had the upper hand, ready to close the deal with his signature pedigree. But here's the twist. CM Punk. The crafty veteran he is pulled off a slick counter move. Out of nowhere, he nailed Triple H with his famous GTS finisher. The arena exploded with cheers as Punk covered Triple H for the win. The next night on Raw, CM Punk teamed up with the WWE World Heavyweight Champion Daniel Bryan to take on Batista and Randy Orton in the main event. Daniel Bryan managed to make Batista submit while CM Punk nailed Randy Orton with his devastating GTS finisher. However, in a shocking turn of events, CM Punk extended his hand for a handshake to Daniel Bryan. Just when Bryan was about to reciprocate, Punk blindsided him with a low blow below the belt, leaving the WWE Universe in utter disbelief. On SmackDown, CM Punk unleashed a brutal assault on Daniel Bryan, catching him completely off guard. It all began when Punk sneakily struck Bryan from behind as he was making his way to the ring. Once inside the squared circle, Punk didn't hold back. He sought out a steel chair from underneath the ring and mercilessly targeted Bryan's leg with a series of chair shots. The WWE Universe watched in shock as the relentless attack unfolded, leaving Bryan in a world of pain and further intensifying their heated rivalry. At Extreme Rules, the WWE Universe witnessed an epic showdown between CM Punk and Daniel Bryan in a no-holds-barred match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. The match was an all-out war, with both superstars leaving it all in the ring. The brutality of the match was off the charts, and the crowd was on the edge of their seats. In the end, though, it was Daniel Bryan who managed to retain both championship belts. Despite the punishment they dished out to each other, Bryan showed his resilience and determination emerging victorious in this unforgettable clash at Extreme Rules. In November 2005, Eddie Guerrero passed away due to heart failure, shocking the wrestling world and leaving a huge void in WWE. But what if he never died? Let's find out. Our second story kicks off with a bang in a triple threat match for the World Heavyweight Championship. It's Eddie Guerrero facing off against the reigning champion Batista and the legend killer Randy Orton. In a jaw-dropping twist of fate, Eddie Guerrero pulls off the unthinkable by triumphing over both formidable opponents. He levels the playing field by introducing a steel chair into the equation, using it to turn the tide in his favor. Finally, with the crowd at fever pitch, Eddie Guerrero seals the deal by soaring through the air with a frog splash, pinning Batista for the victory and claiming the world heavyweight title for the very first time. And now imagine a resurrected ECW with Eddie Guerrero at the forefront, ready to elevate the company to new heights. ECW had always been known for its raw essence and unfiltered wrestling action, and Eddie was the perfect fit to keep that spirit alive. 
One dream matchup that had fans salivating was Eddie Guerrero renewing his legendary rivalry with his former friend in the ECW ring. These two technical wizards could have taken the fans on a wrestling journey for the ages, showcasing their incredible skills and leaving the audience in awe. But it doesn't stop there. The ECW roster would have been stacked with talent like Rob Van Dam, Kurt Angle, and other ECW originals, creating an environment where every match was a potential classic. Eddie Guerrero's presence alone would have added immense prestige to the ECW World Championship and brought fans back to the gritty, intense wrestling action they loved. It's a what-if scenario that could have taken ECW to even greater heights in the wrestling world. Eddie Guerrero had that rare ability to inspire those around him. His dedication to the craft of wrestling and his passion for making fans have an unforgettable time in the squared circle were unparalleled. And let's not forget about the dream matches that could have unfolded in ECW. One such dream match was Eddie Guerrero going head to head with CM Punk. These two met before where Eddie told Punk that they would meet again in the major leagues. ECW could have been the perfect stage for this long awaited rematch. Eddie Guerrero, always the mentor and willing to put over young talent, could have elevated CM Punk by letting him secure a victory. Eddie's willingness to pass the torch and make new stars shine was one of his many strengths. A match like this could have been the cornerstone of ECW's resurgence, giving fans a taste of the incredible wrestling action they craved. It's a match that we can only imagine, but one that would have undoubtedly been remembered for years to come. Before we dive into our final what if scenario, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. In 2005, Sting was one of the biggest stars of TNA, a rival promotion of WWE. He had never signed with WWE despite being offered several times. But what if he signed with WWE in 2005? Let's find out. In 2005, Sting would have signed with WWE on the SmackDown brand. He would have faced wrestlers like Mark Henry who, if my memory serves me correctly, he had never faced before. Sting would have been a perfect fit for the blue brand during those years and alongside The Undertaker, he could have become the face of the brand. Sting could have potentially faced off against The Undertaker at WrestleMania 21, but this could have only happened if he had made his WWE debut at the Royal Rumble in 2005. Imagining this scenario, Sting and The Undertaker, two of the most iconic figures in wrestling history, would have finally collided in a match that fans had eagerly awaited for years. Sting and The Undertaker, in a unique twist, could have joined forces to take on the formidable team of Big Show and Kane. But here's the intriguing part. Their program, wouldn't follow the typical wrestling storyline of a hero versus a villain. Instead, it would be a clash between two enigmatic icons, each representing the cornerstone of their respective wrestling companies. The match between Sting and The Undertaker would have undoubtedly become an instant classic. Fans would have been on the edge of their seats pondering the question, could Sting be the one to break The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak? The showdown would have been monumental, drawing parallels to the iconic clash between The Rock and Hollywood Hogan. It's the kind of match that transcends time, a battle that wrestling fans would talk about for generations to come. In the end, The Undertaker summoned his last reserves of strength and managed to grab Sting. With a monumental effort, he hoisted Sting up and delivered the devastating tombstone pile driver, securing the victory and keeping his iconic WrestleMania streak alive. It was a moment of triumph for The Undertaker and a heartbreaker for Sting and his fans. If you enjoyed this video, please consider sharing it and feel free to let me know in the comments what other what-if scenarios you'd like me to explore next. Goodbye.